So the next time someone says to you, oh, I eat healthy fats, I want you to remember this picture of several different uh, carotids. It's the main artery that connects from your heart to your brain. And on the top are healthy carotid, uh, he healthy carotids, and then on the bottom are blocked ones who, who have high levels of cholesterol. So the bottom ones we call vascular dementia, and the origin for that is unfortunately having too much fat in the diet. So, so to me, when someone says, oh, I eat healthy fats, and oh, by the way, they're thinking is, well, if a little bit is good, a lot's gonna be better. Well, unfortunately, if you're eating a lot of fat, some of that fat is gonna get deposited in the wrong place, specifically in, in the blood vessels that go to your heart. So, so, so no, your brain does not need so much fat that it clogs up the arteries that, that supply the blood supply. So what do I mean by this? So let me give you an example. So over on the left, you see 100% organic ghee grass-fed. And, and what is ghee? Ghee is simply clarified butter. Well, what does clarified butter mean? It means they take butter and they, they clarify it, meaning they heat it up. Oh, interesting. They heat up the butter. Well, we've only recently learned in the last 10 or 20 years um, that when you take butter and you heat it up, the cholesterol in the butter gets oxidized. And we've also learned that oxidized cholesterol, we can now me measure this, it is, is, uh, wreaks havoc on the body and on blood vessels and can cause chronic diseases and it, and it can cause the blockages we see here. So whether you're talking about oil or, or ghee or, or other fats, it, it, is not, it is not true that you need them for a healthy brain or a healthy body. So I, so I talked a little bit about oxidized cholesterol. Where, where can you find oxidized cholesterol? Well, obviously ghee. Another, another high source of oxidized cholesterol is gonna be canned tuna, because guess what? There's cholesterol in tuna fish. And in the canning process, they heat the tuna and it's the heat that will oxidize the cholesterol in there. Another one is powdered milk. How do you make powdered milk? Well, you take milk that's at body temperature and, and then you heat it to powder it and it's the heating process. Here's another example, steamed salmon. People will say, oh, well, you know, I, I have a healthy diet. I eat steamed salmon because it's, it's, it's uh, better than the grilled salmon. No, it's not from the oxidized cholesterol perspective. It has a thousand times the amount of oxidized cholesterol. And if you wanna learn more about oxidized cholesterol, I highly recommend some of the videos on nutritionfacts.org. So, so what will happen is if, if there's too much fat in the body, some of that fat will end up in what we call ectopic fat. And ectopic is just a fancy Greek word for out of its normal place. And an example of ectopic fat would be blood vessels. I mean, you don't want extra blood vessels to get filled up with fat and then be obstructed and then the blood can't go through and you have strokes and heart attacks and things like that. So this is a busy slide, lots of detailed biochemistry. We're not gonna go over all the details, but I want you to know from a, from a basic view, when you get have too much fat in the body, the first place the body will, see the body wants to hold on to this fat because historically our ancestors had periods of famine and whoever held on to the most fat were the ones who survived to pass on their genes to the next generation. So from a, from a evolutionary standpoint, Fat is like gold. The difference is back then, it wasn't available for consumption 24 seven at the local you know, convenience store. You actually had to work to get food that, that you could convert to fat or, um, or be, that, that was fatty. So, 
So the, the first place the fat gets deposited is actually in muscle. The next place is the liver and then to the, the pancreas. So now normally, you know, your fat may be deposited under, under your belly or on your bottom and that's subcutaneous fat. The, the visceral fat, there's, there's fat called visceral fat that's highly metabolically active and can cause inflammation worse than the other fat cells in your body. It's interesting, when I was in medical school in the early 90s, you know, we didn't really talk about how fat, that fat cells had an endocrine, that type role um, releasing hormones. Now we know that's true. Now the visceral fat is highly metabolically active, releasing all these hormones. And you wanna keep the visceral fat, the fat that surrounds your heart and kidneys and liver and internal or organs to a minimum. And, and then finally, we, we talked about blood vessels. So, okay. Next, I want to, this is a complicated slide, but I want people to understand because, because people have heard that, let's, let's, let's take diabetes, that diabetes is a, is, a, is a disease of blood sugar. And that's only half true. The other part of the story is fat, excess fat will make you, your, it make you insulin resistant so that uh, the insulin doesn't work uh, as well. So, so it's not just sugar that can cause diabetes. It's fat, excess fat in the diet. And even though the basic research shows this, this has not filtered down to mainstream dietitians. I, I certainly know dietitians who understand this, and I certainly know other physicians who understand this, but the, the intramyocyte lipids, the fat that goes into muscle, ends up causing insulin, insulin resistance and makes you more likely to have diabetes. And, it's, and, and why are we even talking about this? I'm talking about this because despite the craziness with COVID in the last couple of years, and maybe in addition to it, heart disease is still a major cause of death. We're talking over half, half a million people in the United States every year. Now, and if you look from the graph, it's gone up exponentially. And then one of the questions I commonly get is, but, but what about, you know, it, it's because the population of the United States has, has grown. Well, it's true. The population of the United States has increased, but this, this, the increase of deaths from heart disease has gone up more than you would expect from that. The other thing people notice is, hey, look, you know, recently the numbers have come down. And that's true. People a little bit has come down. And, and one of the reasons for that actually is people are starting to listen and decrease their fat intake. Another reason is people are starting to take statin medications, which will decrease your cholesterol level. And, but what, what, they don't, what they don't tell you is statins will make you less likely to die from heart disease, but more likely to die from stroke and other things. So that's a whole other story. So this is why we're talking about, this is a major cause of death and disease, chronic disease in our country. Mm -hmm.